Hey everyone, it's Brandy and you're watching Abstract Crafter. In today's video, I have a fun little unboxing for you from a company called Fundiful. So if you are curious about what's inside this nice little Amazon box, then just keep on watching and we will get into that in just a few moments. Hello friends, welcome back. And if you are new to my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so glad that you are here today. And I appreciate all of you stopping by to spend a little bit of time with me while I unbox this diamond painting from Fundiful. Fundiful reached out to me and asked if I would be willing to do a video review for them. And I took a look at their paintings and I thought, why not? Let's go for it. Let's see what they got. I always enjoy finding new sellers on Amazon. Amazon is my preferred place to order. And I am just about done with my year-long hiatus from AliExpress. So in the coming year, I should have more paintings coming from overseas. So without further ado, let's get into it. It's upside down because for some reason when I ordered this, it came with something else that I had ordered a few days prior, which I thought was just really weird. Because one was in my name, one was in my husband's name. Whatever. Doesn't matter. So this is... You'll see once we get into it, but I, um, I'm just going to kind of shake it out of there. And <laughs> there she is. Uh, this is kind of a more realistic type picture which I don't typically order because I'm always skeptical of those. I'm never sure how they're really going to turn out. But I fell in love with this particular painting and I thought it would be a perfect addition for my craft area. So let's uh, first of all take a look at this super cute and different box. It's very creative. It's got all kinds of artsy stuff on there, you know, paint palette some markers, a bunch of erasers and pencils, and it, it goes around the box. There's like all kinds of stuff that I'm super familiar with. So that's really, really cool. I mean, and it goes all the way around, so that is nice. I always appreciate the little subtle touches that different companies will make, and of course, in very small print on the back, they have a picture and a written guide as to how to diamond paint if you're unsure. So let's see. Let's just get right into it. And when we open our box here, this is what it looks like inside. So it looks like everything is packed pretty nicely inside. Um, I was reading through the description box when I was going to get pictures and whatnot to, for you guys, you know, I like to insert a picture as, long, as well as the listing. And I noticed that they have what they call a Rubik's Cube Diamond. I've never heard any companies refer to them in this way. So I thought that was kind of a, a neat way to describe their uh, products. And I did notice that... They also come with an inventory sheet. You don't always get those on Amazon. Oh, and that's really wrapped tight. But there it is. And if it would stop rolling up on me, I could show it to you. Let's just do the old trick that I like to do with diamond paintings. And we'll do it to this. So it has all the information right on there. It has the, well, it's not really the name, but the serial number for it. You can see kind of a picture there. I'll show you a better picture. Uh, it's got the size on it in centimeters and oh, they even have some social media information there for you if you are so curious and you want to visit them on Facebook. It sounds, it looks like, it sounds like, it sounds, <laughs> it looks like the name of the Facebook page is Wending Diamond Painting and her Facebook is that right there. So anyhow, when you're looking at 
inventory sheets. If you have not seen one, you're not super familiar with them. Typically, it's the number in order. Some companies will go in DMC order number, which is what it looks like here. Some will go in color number. It just depends. And so you have your number and sequence that it follows, the code that will correspond to the diamond painting and where you place this drill, the DMC number, and the quantity, I'm not sure if that's the quantity that they give you or the quantity needed for the painting. Sometimes they'll give you both numbers, sometimes one or the other. And in this case, I'm not entirely sure. But this is a full round, and here is our pack of diamonds, and we'll look at them more closely in a moment. Um, we have our standard, semi-standard toolkit, and it looks like... More and more companies are including these alignment tools, and this one is a little bit smaller than the ones that come in Star Roar, which, which are right here. But, hey, I like a variety of sizes of things, so I am much appreciated of them. And I do really like these smaller green trays. I probably have about a hundred of them, so I'm kind of looking forward to getting new ones in the future. But... This is what you get, and it looks like a 10-placer, multi-placer comes with this particular kit. So, it's um, double-sided. Oh, and look at that. It's actually got two sizes. Oh, excuse the nail polish on me. I never clean up before I film. So sorry. It's got two sizes of alignment tools, and it looks like this is the same size is the one I already have. So that's really cool to have a double-sided one. That was nice. And then, again, you get this 10-placer, which I don't typically use multi-placers. But, and then, of course, you get your wax, your tray, and some tweezers. So onto the painting itself. It is quite rolled up. It might come loose once we uh, take the paper off and then place it back down. It's really stiff. It's a nice stiff canvas. So let's get that out and see if we can't straighten this. I get a little worried when I see stuff like that and I'm hoping that it's just got pinched like that from being packaged. Uh, we will find out in a moment and once we can get this flat I can go over a little bit more of the canvas with you. But in the meantime, we can kind of take a look at the canvas condition. And you do want to kind of go a little slow with this. You don't want to pull super fast. That can cause issues. And it looks like we are in the clear. A little bit of wrinkling on that. But I don't think it'll be anything that'll get in the way of the painting itself. It's always good to lift your cover paper and check it over right away. And you can see up close that the symbols are fairly clear. They seem pretty easy to read. Um, let's check out both sides because sometimes you can get blurry. But it does look like they are fairly easy to uh, see, even from a distance. So I'm hoping that putting this cover paper back down will help flatten it and you can take your alignment tool if you don't have a bone folder which is what I prefer to use to flatten cover papers but you can use that to kind of help you get air bubbles out which will also help flatten the canvas a little bit but it makes a huge difference to just lift that cover paper up and then place it back down uh, if this were a clear cover I would test the stickiness but it's Anytime you see this kind of cover paper, it's double-sided sticky tape on the other side. Uh, it's too early for me to really know whether or not um, double-sided sticky tape is a very good long-term solution. And you can see here just a little bit of it did bubble up right there. You can see that. That does look like it could easily be smoothed out by either hold, holding it as pulling it as flat as possible and kind of running this tool along along it you're not going to hurt it this is not like the double-sided sticky tape that you can just buy at like 
Walmart or Target or whatever, it's a higher quality, a little bit stronger. So you can be rough with it. Now that seemed to do the trick, but if it hadn't, you can also take a little X-Acto knife and just cut it and lay it flat that way too. I have done that as well. And this seems like the kind of canvas that could really, you know, hold up. It's really, like I said, it's really thick. It's got a little bit of a plastic coating over the top of it. And I do like to turn it over because any issues with the canvas will show up on the back side if there's rivers or pinches or any kind of bulging. It does have a little bit of a wrinkle right here. That may or may not go away once I hang it with the rest of them. So now that we've got that out of the way, you can see it does have right on the very top here, it's got the branding in nice big letters. It's got that same serial number that you can match on the top of your inventory sheet there. And it's on the drills here as well. So if you don't kit these up right away and you just stick this away, you, that's how you can know which ones go together based on that number being on all three components. They also have the printed ins picture instructions here, kind of. <laughs> and then you get an inventory on the side as well that has the code. I think that's all, yep, the code, the DMC, and the quantity. And you can always use these to match up to make sure that things are all looking like they should. That's typically why you have an inventory sheet is so you don't have to use this to make sure you have all your diamonds. So now let's flip this over. Uh, actually, before we do that, why don't I insert a picture here from Amazon and then I'll also insert the listing so that you can read about it for yourself. There's quite a bit of information in the listing. So feel free to pause and read through it if you would like. Otherwise, I will also link this in the description box for you to be able to check that out on your own time. But I will insert that for you right here. All right, so um, if you did not notice in the listing, it did. this does retail for $12.99. At this very moment of recording, they do have a 5% coupon, but uh, that'll save you a few little pennies. Let's take a look at the colors and see what we are working with. And I will, it looks like there's 30 colors in this painting. And they look like they are weighed and not standard 200 count. And you can tell by the differences in quantities here. So I'm going to go ahead and just quickly lay out all the colors. I'm not going to. I will do a quick inventory off camera. And if you've never come across something like this, what I would do when I was doing inventory is I would start at the very first number of 151 and I would make sure I have it and then I would just make a little check mark next to that and then go right down the list with 318 being the next one make sure you can see all these colors and it looks like they've stacked them in order but because I pulled them out so crazily it's not super obvious but you want to just make sure go ahead and make sure you have all of the numbers that they say you should have in your kit and if not then you it's best to contact them immediately to get some replacements sent out because you, you never know sometimes they could be overseas even if you buy it from Amazon it could take them some time to get them to you so it's best to check through all of this stuff right away and make sure you have everything you need. So I'm just quickly scanning as I lay these out to 
just do a quick visual inspection. And if you've worked with these enough, you kind of get a really good idea of what this quantity looks like. So when 912 comes up and it says I need 48, I know there's probably, probably about 100 in here. They do claim to give you 30% overage so that you never need to worry about drills. So uh, I guess we'll find out when I'm all done with this little beauty. But I'm going to quickly finish going over all of these and then I will come back so you can see the whole color story. All right, my friends, here is the whole color story. And I know you're getting a little bit of glare from my lights. I'm so sorry, but it just cannot be avoided with all these shiny little packages. But you can see there's so many beautiful, beautiful colors in here. They're very bright and vibrant. And I think what they mean by the Rubik's Cube is, I don't know if that's going to be obvious at all but they are more pointed some diamonds you'll get will be have more of a flat top on these and these ones come up to a point which ultimately means that they have more cuts but i can see very beautifully this is a very pink picture and i see a wonderful variety of pinks in here i see a lot of colors that i do not have yet in rounds so i'm pretty pumped about that i am almost almost there with having a full set of reserves in every color. I could just cheat the system and order some, but I can't. I need to collect them. That is my obsession right now. So, um, very nice. You can see a lot of ombres. You can see a lot of where the colors are going to balance each other out. And you all know if you've been with me for any amount of time that I love a good ombre. Like... These blues here will pair beautifully together in a picture. Then you even have it with the greens here. You have a nice range of darker to lighter. So very nice. And the amount of pinks, let's just place them all together. And purples that you get, or mobs I should say, is pretty outstanding. You get a nice variety of grays and some cream colors. Oh, here's another green I missed. This is one of my favorite colors, the 3756. It's like a very light mint color. It's one of my favorites. And it can look white when it's by itself. But obviously when you pair it next to a 3865 or a 5200, it becomes a lot more obvious that it's more of a seafoam green color. So this is the story color story that we are working with here. And let's bring back in the colors I just pulled up. It, I like it a little better like this. I can, It's more visually appealing to me. I like having them in order. And I had everything. I wasn't missing any of them. All 30 colors are accounted for. And if you take a look at the symbols, some of them are fairly simple and something you see all the time. And then you get a few little special ones that are a little bit different. And I make my own labels for my containers. Like... Clear examples are here from a kit I just did. I absolutely love doing that. So that's why I talk about symbols. So let's move all of these drills off and wrap this video up. There is not a whole lot to go over for this unboxing. A nice, easy, simple unboxing. It's the way I like it. So for scoring, um, and again, I know I say it in all videos, but for anybody who might be new and doesn't don't know how I do things, I have a checklist and a scoring guideline that I use on all paintings so that I have some kind of cohesiveness and some kind of format and a system to go by. And I don't go over point by point on camera, but I do do it off camera. So... There will be a link in the description box if you so wish to see a more in-depth video on this. And I'm trying to find my measuring tape. Okay, so let's measure and make sure. Now they are saying this is a 30 by 40 or a 12 by 16. And yep, we're 40 centimeters on that image. The long way and... The bottom here, 
we are at 30, which should be 12. I don't know why I never believe it. It's just shy of 12, but that's okay. And I do believe that the description gave measurements in both canvas size and the actual image. So, very nice, very accurate. I did look over my scoring sheet and gave that a little bit of a rundown. And I did land on a 9.5 out of 10, or 9.5, for Fundiful and... The only place I took points off was for the canvas condition. I did take a half a point off of that just because you can see it's fairly wrinkled. It's going to need a little quick iron, quite possibly. It's fairly thick, so I'm not sure how well that'll come out on its own. Even lifting that cover paper didn't really help flatten it. So I did take a half a point off for that, but nine and a half is a very respectable score on... Amazon itself, this is sitting at a full five stars, which is not all that common when dealing with Amazon and buying things off of there. So I was very pleased to see that. The reviews seemed very positive. Um, I did see a few pictures of this completed. It is a little, little pixelated. They don't offer any other sizes, so that'll be, that'll remain to be seen if it will translate well. I am excited. I'm hopeful. I love sewing. I love sewing machines. I have an antique sewing machine. I can't tell you how old, but it's it's pretty old. I want to say it's from like the maybe somewhere between the 40s and the 60s. Not 100% sure, but and then of course I have a modern one. I love everything to do with sewing machines. I love the look of the sewing area they got here and all of the little ribbons and lace and everything around it. I love the colors associated with this painting and I have seen it before but like I said I'm always a little weary when it comes to ordering off of um like more realistic looking pictures so this hopefully will ease my mind a little but that's really all I have for you today. I say if this looks good to you. Go check them out. See what they have to offer. Like I said, I will leave a link in the description box for you. I'm pretty excited. I don't think this will take me very long. I love all the colors in this painting. It's so cute and so pastel. And it's just, it's right, just right there as far as the aesthetic for my craft room. I can't wait to show you what I do with this when it's all done. But that's where I'm going to leave you today, friends. So make sure that you subscribe if you have not done so already. It would mean so, so much to me. Give the video a thumbs up. That helps get the video seen, gets the video out there and recommended so more people will see it. And then that will help our wonderful, beautiful family grow. And then hit that bell notification so that you will always be updated when I upload more videos just like this one. Plus all the super exciting things I have coming up in the future. You don't want to miss out on anything. And with that, I will let you go. Have an awesome, awesome day. Have fun doing whatever it is that truly, truly makes you happy. I love you, friends, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.